So what I'm going to do in this example is a trihybrid cross in Drosophila. We're going to use both autosomal and sex-linked genes. And so let's start reading the description that the problem is giving us. Now it says, give the genotype and the phenotype of the F1 progeny. That's the first progeny of the cross between two parents. And that can be produced in Drosophila from mating between a female with white eyes. And so our first trait, let's, before we keep reading, stop. We have white eyes. And so we have our eyes, right? That's our first type of trait. And then we have curled wings. And so we have wings as a second trait that we need to keep track of. And bristles and normal long bristles, right? Those are the three traits we need to keep track of. And so the two phenotypes that we have, or at least the first set of phenotypes that we see is that the female has white eyes. The female also has normal long bristles. So I'm just gonna, or normal wing, or curled wings, my bad. And then for bristles, we have normal, or just call it long at this point. And a male has normal red eyes. And so the other type of phenotype for eyes is red. We have straight wings instead of curled. And then we have short stubby bristles. Let's just call it short. Now in these individuals, curled wings result from a heterozygous condition, a gene whose locus is on chromosome two. So we're talking about curled wings. Curled wings is resulting from a heterozygous condition. So what could that mean? That means if you have curled, you have to be heterozygous for the alleles that are going to be hat. So let's give this the letter C. And so we'll call curled is when you're heterozygous for C. So big C, little C. Or we can even do it as C plus and C. Both ways work. And then we have short stubby bristles result from a heterozygous condition at a gene whose locus is on chromosome three. So first we know that it's on a different chromosome, so that's good. And then we have a heterozygous condition. And so um, short stubby bristles, happen when you have, or not C, let's give it um, little b. So bristles will be heterozygous if you are short. And then white eyes are an X-length character. The mutant allele for white eyes is recessive to the wild type allele for the brick red eye color. So here we don't have it that it's whether it's heterozygous or not. Here we have just a basic recessive dominance relationship. And so for white eyes, this would be your recessive form. And then red eyes would be one of these alleles would be a positive. And so here, and I'll just write dash because it doesn't matter whether this one's recessive or dominant, it's going to be red. And so we're going to, now let's put this together. We have our female, she had white eyes, right? So WW, and then we have to keep track that this is actually sex link too. And the females has two X link genes. And so we do have two alleles for it. Then the female also has curled wings, which means she's also C plus C, like we said. And then we have our normal long bristles. And so since we have a heterozygous condition for short, the normal long bristles would be recessive to that. And so we would instead, instead of writing B plus B, we'd have little b, little b. Now, let me make sure I write that down so that we are aware of what that looks like. Now for the male, we have normal red eyes, right? Now, remember this is a sex link gene. We're wondering like, okay, well, is, is he heterozygous or homozygous dominant? What's the difference? Well, remember that the male has to have at least a Y gene. So he only carries one allele. So if he has a normal red eyes, that means he has the W plus allele, right? For red eyes. And then he has his Y chromosome. So that's it. That's, that's the genotype of the male when it comes to his eyes. And then he has normal straight wings. So he's also recessive for the straight wings, for the wings characteristic. And then he has short stubby bristles, which means he's heterozygous for bristles. And then you just have to cross these two or cross all these three traits. Now, like they told us, curled wings happens on chromosome two or wings happens on chromosome two. Bristles are on chromosome three and eyes on X length chromosome, which means all these chromosomes are independent, which means they segregate independently, which means we can just do Punnett squares for each characteristic by itself and then just multiply the probabilities through because they're independent events. And so let's just start off by doing it for uh, the eye color. For the female, we have two recessive genes. And then for the male, we have the dominant allele and the Y chromosome. And so when you do the Punnett square, we're going to have a heterozygous female and another heterozygous female. So it turns out all our females are going to be heterozygous and they're going to be dominant, so they're going to have red eyes. And over here, all our males are going to have the recessive allele 
and therefore they're only going to have white eyes. That's so basically if we're going to characterize this, it's going to be one half red females, right? And then we have one half white males. Now when we go to our wings section over here, we have a cross between a heterozygous, um, heterozygous female, so let's write it down here, and then we have a homozygous male. And so this is just gonna work like a typical autosomal gene. It's not gonna be, it's gonna be independent of the sex. And we're gonna have a two heterozygous uh, offspring and two homozygous recessive offspring. And so we have one half, we'll have curled wings, And the other half is going to have straight wings. And then when we go to our bristles, again, we have our female, as homozygous recessive for long bristles. And then we have our male, as heterozygous, which gives him short bristles. And so we do our Punnett square, we get half the offspring is heterozygous, and the other half is homozygous. And so we have. For our phenotype, we have one half short, and the other half is long. And so, essentially, if we want to figure out the probabilities for all the possible genotypes, we'd have to just multiply them through. We do a branch diagram. And so we start off with two branches. We have our one half red and female, right? And then we have our one half white male. And then these branch out. So for one half red female, you could either have curled wings, which is a one half probability curled, and a one half probability of straight, because these are independent of sex. And the same thing for the male, one half curled, and then one half straight. And then we branch those out even more. So for the, if the wet one half red female, that's also curled, they can also have short, so which is a half probability of having short bristles, and so there's a half probability of having long bristles, or long. And the same thing goes for here, one half, one half, I'm not gonna write it all out because it becomes a lot. Same thing for the male, you could be one half white male and curled, and for those, they can either be short or long, and with a half probability of either. And same thing over here, one half, one half, and now you multiply the, the probabilities through. So if you multiply the probability of being one half red female and one half being curled and one half being short, that's one over two to the third or one eighth. So you have a one eighth probability of being a red female with curled wings and short bristles. Now what about the probability of being a white male with straight wings and long bristles? Well, that would be one half time of being white male times one half probability of being having straight wings and then times one half the probability of having long bristles which should also be one eighth and so over here for every single genotype that we have we have a one eighth probability for getting that certain phenotype and so that is our genotype and phenotype ratios for our f1 progeny in this problem and so that depicts the tri-hybrid cross